Hi, I'm JKB and welcome to Weekly Bites, the new show that isn't too professional. It's just a guy in front of a camera talking to you, reaching out, saying, hand me your hand for five to ten minutes so I could tell you the news and we can have a discussion about it like we're best friends and maybe more. I'd also like to point out I stream on here every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. All of those times are down below. They never change unless something special is happening. I'd just like to say thank you so much to the 760 members on the live stream who are supporting me over there in ways I never imagined would happen. Thank you. So the first thing I'm going to bring up that I found interesting out of the week was Sean Layton going on to Games Beat talking about exclusives. Now, if you don't know who Sean Layton is, he is the ex-CEO of PlayStation. Now, on March 8th, he was on Games Beat. He talked about a bunch of things, but the interesting thing that I thought I should bring to you guys was his sort of input when it comes to $200 million exclusives on PlayStation versus releasing games day one on PlayStation and PC. So what he's essentially saying in the interview is that when you have a $200 million game and you only have it on PlayStation, that's kind of, as he stated, the Achilles heel of exclusives. So to give some insight into this, back in the day when PlayStation was working on PlayStation 1, they would make it clear that they would make 10 PlayStation games they would have a certain budget on each of them. And the idea was that if one or two of those titles really hit off, they would pay for the rest and PlayStation could continue to make games. Nowadays, that idea is really starting to go out the window based on what kind of genre of game we are releasing. And I'm talking about live service games. So Sean also goes to, on to say in this interview that when you're releasing a live service game, Really, if you crack the funnel open, as he said, you know, the funnel just to PlayStation? No, if you crack that open and move it over to PC, we're starting to see what can actually happen. If you look at the sales numbers of Helldivers 2 on PC, well, there's proof. However, I do want to kind of counterbalance this argument because he is saying that $200 million games that are exclusive they have to hit a certain goal or PlayStation's not making the money that they used to. But he's also saying that when they drop a live service genre game on PlayStation and PC day one, it really paid off. So he's kind of making confusing statements here. It really makes me think about what is the future of PlayStation? Are they going to go down this road all the way with all of their future titles when they're releasing it on PlayStation 5 and PC day one? In my personal opinion, I think it's a smart move at this point in time. Like I've said in the last couple of weeks online, I believe that the console wars are kind of over and we're moving into the IP wars because we all know in the future, all of the companies are gathering up all of these IPs for a reason, but that's really something, you know, 10, 20 years down the line. In the current state of the video game industry, I feel that, yes, you should not really have exclusives anymore because what are they really doing except holding you back? And I know that's kind of a hot take and some people are gonna be like, you've lost your goddamn mind. But at the end of the day, do you really wanna go out there and buy a bunch of consoles or just like one that can play all of them? And that's an argument that a lot of people have had in the past. Game Pass is incredible on Xbox, but it's not really anywhere else except PC and mobile. Wouldn't it be cool if you could have it on PlayStation? And again, I know that a lot of gamers out there are gonna be like, yeah, I love Xbox or I love PlayStation or I love my Nintendo Switch. I'd rather just stick to that. And by all means, I'm not saying that you shouldn't. I'm just saying that more the merrier. Stellar Blade is an upcoming third person hack and slash with, um, how do you say this? Uh, incredible assets. The, they're, they're, they're designed in a way that make you go, I'm sweating, why am I sweating? But assets aside, let's talk about what really happened behind the scenes. I don't even remember what was going on, but I looked on Twitter and all these people were talking about this demo that randomly was dropped by Sony. You better go play it, it's amazing. People were talking about how good the graphics are, how good the gameplay is, and how good the music is. So I was like, oh my God, I gotta jump on board and play this game. As I went over to the PlayStation store to find it, couple hours later, it was gone. So again, this plays into the future of gaming and how I feel about it. 
The ability to be able to reach into a library and remove a license is something that's kind of always been taking place in the gaming industry. The only difference here is that sometimes games will randomly disappear from the store. However, you can go into your library and re-download them. And that has to do with licenses, mostly to do with music licenses that are in games. They lose the license to be able to distribute the game because there's a license attached to the music itself. So the artist might say, give me more money. And Sony will say, well, now nah, we'll just pull the game. And it comes down to money as usual, greed. Now I'm not saying that the artist doesn't deserve the money, but it's down to PlayStation not wanting to fork over the money, maybe because the game is not selling anymore, or maybe they're just being cheap about it. Really, at the end of the day, we don't know why Sony does pull some of the games that they do pull. But what's super interesting here is not only did the game demo randomly drop out of nowhere because it was accidentally dropped, but they're also now going into your library and removing the license to be able to play it. So you may have the data on your system, that contains the game itself, but you actually can't play it. So at the end of the day, we have to kind of just trust these companies that our purchases will be available at the end of the year or two years from now. So it's not really a great outlook. Like for instance, Octopath Traveler was pulled from the eShop for no reason apparently, but it'll be back up soon according to Nintendo. But again, it's just showing that these digital futures that we're all headed towards are not really what we think. So that's why I'm still supporting physical media. Let me know down in the comments below, are you still buying physically and are you really worried that Sony is going to reach into your library and pull full games out of it? I don't know. So far it's not looking great. And there's one last thing I want to talk about when it comes to Sony and their games. There was a massive leak over at Insomniac Games, and we all know how terrible that really was for the industry. We all got kind of a behind-the-scenes look at the Wolverine game that they're working on, which, in my personal opinion, is absolutely terrible, and I feel terrible for the developers, because a lot of it is passion. And when you're making a game, a lot of it is about showing off your work. And when something gets leaked like that, it completely drains the energy from everything within that studio. So seeing that earlier in the year was terrible. Now, something else just leaked from that leak itself. I don't know why it took so long, but yep, we now know that Sony canceled one major game. And that game was called Spider-Man The Great Web. It was a five-player co-op game where you take on the Sinister Six and you can play as Gwen Stacy and the rest of the team. And it, you know, I'm not gonna show the footage here in this video, obviously, but you can go and find it on Twitter. And it actually looked like a great game. A lot of fun could be had swinging around New York City with your friends. And it's kind of disappointing to see Sony just canceling things one after another. They canceled a Twisted Metal game. They canceled The Last of Us. And now we know they canceled a Spider-Man multiplayer game. So on one side of the coin, a lot of us are complaining about live service games, such as the Suicide Squad, which I threw somewhere back here, and I think it's, I think it's growing legs and it's probably gonna escape soon. But in saying that, you know, a lot of people aren't too fond of live service games at the moment. And yes, this Spider-Man game, and of course the Last of Us and that Twisted Metal game were supposed to be live service games. So it's kind of hard to kind of be like, ah, I, this, this is something I wanted because at the end of the day, at the moment, me personally, I'm not really looking forward to all these live service games. I'm kind of sick of them. So how do you feel about Spider-Man The Great Web being canceled? Is that something you would have played with your friends? Probably. Thank you so much and please subscribe and follow me on Twitter. That way you guys can send me stories you want me to talk about and hopefully you guys enjoyed this because if not, I'm up shit creek without a paddle.